Hey everybody, welcome to a new video. So in this video, we're going to put the party particles. So, sorry for the joke, it was a bit too much. Um, in this video, we are going to realize what I just showed you. So this is basically a little trick uh, which allows us to use the particle position to generate a noise value using GPFG according to the position of the particles and then use this value that we generated as a force vector to apply to our particles. Okay, so let's see how this works. So first of all, let's make a bit of room here in the patch. Let's move a couple of stuff a bit down and this matrix is as well a bit down and uh, okay let's move these guys a bit up uh, let's change a bit the background color like uh, something really dark but slightly reddish so maybe something like this let's see how this looks like yeah cool there's something like blue and violet purple is there. I wanted to have a color like that. Cool. Uh, then let's create the object which is going to be the protagonist of this video, which is the JIT BFG object. Which, uh, if you don't know it, is an object that generates some noise um, according to a grid of values, usually. But instead of using a grid of values in this case, we are going to use the position of our particles as the input for the noise function. So the noise function will be generated using our particle position instead of just the values from a grid. So we need three planes because this is going to be a vector three for x, y, and z uh, uh, force. Flat 32 and dimensions 10,000. Yeah, exactly. Then we need to connect the matrix, the position of our particles to this object. Oh, and of course we need to select a basis. We're going to use the noise simplex, which is a kind of barely noise, but with the faster implementation. So this is going to be pretty fast and not wait so much on our computer. And cool, we're already getting the noise. So this is the noise that we're going to use as a force to be applied to our particles. So let's do it. Let's go inside our JIT gen. Uh, let's move this stuff a bit on the right. This is the patch that we left the last time, patch number four. So let's create another input, input four, comment, and let's call it noise, uh, uh, noise, BFG, actually BFG noise. Cool. And, uh, okay, let's multiply this. Let's actually create a parameter, which is going to be the noise force how did we call the others uh, attraction strength so let's call it noise strength let's give it a value a pretty small value cool then let's multiply this by that by noise strength and cool for the moment let's not make our particles attracted by the um, attracted by the target so let's remove actually the target part here and instead of using the force that attracts the particles to the target let's actually use directly the noise strength and uh, cool, we need to connect this here and suck alrighty so now what is happening is that the particles uh, the position of the particles goes inside the BFG object which generates then uh, uh, some values that we are using as a force for the particles to be pushed. Now, um, according to my experiment, this works better if the, the, if the velocity from the previous frame is a bit damped, a bit more than what we are doing now. So let's actually do a couple of things. Let's re create a parameter, which we are going to call a friction or friction or whatever. Let's give it an initial value of 0 0.9. Attrition, is this a word? Let's call it friction. I'm not sure this is a word either, but uh, sounds somehow better. So then let's multiply this by friction. Cool. This is not needed anymore, this comment. Cool. So this is how our particle system looks now. The particles are emitted from the emitter point. They follow the force of the field, the the noise, the vector field, basically, that we created using the noise. Exactly. We basically created a vector field 
of uh, forces using the using the GTPFG, uh, which is pretty cool. So we're using three-dimensional input from the particle positioning, y and z position, to create a single, uh, actually three values that we're going to use as the force. And this is basically how a vector field works. So the particles are constantly inside uh, this vector field, uh, which uh, pushes them um, in certain directions, because it's like there are little all little forces everywhere in the world pushing those particles at every point in time and space. So, uh, cool, this was the velocity. Uh, you know what we can do now? We can actually scale the value of the position in order to kind of scale uh, the noise values that we get as an output is a bit like the zoom uh, attribute in JIT uh, GLBFG or the scale attribute inside JIT BFG. Now, if you use the scale attribute, it's not, it, it will not do anything because the, um, uh, the results, the values are not output anymore according to the initial grid, they are output according to our particles position. So we actually need to scale the input which is the particle position. So we will do like this. Let's call this gen uh, just scale. And let's create a parameter inside param scale. Let's give it an initial value of three. And let's multiply the position of the particles by scale. And there we go. Cool. So now the noise is like if we zoomed inside the noise. And as you can see, uh, the particles are following this noise field pretty nice oh i just realized that there is a ladder here sorry for that looks pretty shabby uh real life doesn't look so bad no, it actually does sorry about that uh okay cool what else uh let's actually push uh, instead of making the particles uh, start from this emitter position once they die let's actually start them from the target position so the target, our little red ball, is now emitting the particles. Let me go full screen. So this, this tar the, the ball is now emitting the particles. So when they will die, they will uh, start again from the particle position. Uh, sorry, from the target position and then be um, moved by the vector field of the noise. This is a bit... Um, is a bit like uh, the algorithm that is often used to simulate smoke in a cheap way if you don't want to implement fluid simulation and this kind of stuff uh, it's nice to implement smoke like that so because it looks a bit smoky if you play a bit around with the parameters then it's going to look better and better for example we can play a bit around with the noise strength so noise strength is the value of the force the strength of the force of the vectors created by the noise so let's put this here and let's try to play a bit around with it. Let's make it very small. As you can see, if we make it very small, uh, the particles are slightly going to be uh, uh, moved by this noise, which is pretty cool because then it looks like um, it looks a bit like exactly like smoke. We can make then it a bit bigger these values uh, and until we get uh, really big. So depending on the effort we want to have, we can play a bit around with this value. So this is pretty cool. Uh, one thing is that the noise simplex doesn't come... Uh, it's not between minus 1 and 1, it's not really... Um, uh, it's not really between minus 1 and 1, so what we could want to do is to actually to normalize it. So let's actually normalize it and then multiply it by the noise strength, which gives us a bit more control on it. We can change the scale value for our input position in order to have uh, some different results. Let's try that. So scale. So this is the scale of the noise you have to think. This is like the scale of the noise. So with one we will have a, a pretty kind of uh, low frequency noise. If we make this higher, this value, we will have a higher frequency noise. I think three is a pretty good number according to my experimentation and uh, this specific particle system. So, but uh, yeah, you can play a bit around with that. Cool. Uh, we, could even, uh, we could even add an offset, continuous offset to the particles position in order to not have the noise static, but uh, to have it moving at every frame. Let's try that. So let's try that. We can do something like that inside here. 
we create a bottom offset uh, split to zero and then we can basically sum it to every component of the positions so we basically just go are offsetting around the positions uh, which uh, will just make the noise change because by the moment the noise the vector field of the noise is static we can make it change uh, according to our offset so let's create a jitmo dot time draw two particles speed uh, let's give it speed of uh, 0 0.2 let's say automatic one automatics cool and then let's say off set dollar one it's a bit like the offset in the no in the when using the gpfg in a classical version okay let's make the speed a bit bigger oh no it's not working because they connected to the gpfg object so it doesn't do anything exactly so let's go back to speed 0 0.4 here okay so let's see how, how it goes cool so you can see that the noise is like slightly offset which is not the best um, it's not really the best result i have to say so we probably don't want that we could offset in the fourth dimensions but i'm not sure this actually works uh, so let's keep it simple and uh, offset only on the uh, let's not offset at all so the noise will be actually static okay cool uh, we could actually change the colors of the particle so instead of using just the value of the color as uh, just as the um, as the alpha value we could actually uh, use this as a mix between two different colors so for example we could have them red when they are just born and then go back to blue when they are dying something like that let's maybe make it a bit nicer with a bit more a bit more nice colors something like this you can really you can replay a lot around with the colors part uh, we are going to see a lot of these in the future videos about the particle series we are going to play a lot with the colors and everything but for the moment um, I just keep it like that okay so uh, we could still kind of try to use the lifetime as actually as the alpha uh, we can actually do it in a very simple way we can do it like this jitpack 2 1 so we do this and for the um, for the alpha we use the lifetime yeah this should actually work let's see yeah cool so there was there is actually no need to uh to use the value of the colors the alpha we can just take the lifetime directly uh pretty cool pretty cool we could use the um, we could use the draw blend mode add instead of uh, instead of alpha blend see what we get uh which looks pretty juicy looks pretty juicy so yeah uh, that's some things that we can do, but uh, the main focus of this video was uh, to uh, use the particle position to generate a noise value that then we can use to push, uh, to move the particle so as, it, as if it is a force generated according to the position of the particles. That's why it looks so nice. You can also use other noises, but remember that other noises will not go into negative or positive values, only if you give them the sign uh, attribute. So yeah, the simplex noise is the, is the simplest to use, as the as name suggests, but you can definitely use all the other buzzes. Okay, cool. Um, brief tutorial. I hope this is going to be brief and uh, hope it was uh, useful. And uh, see you soon in the next one. We're really going to push those particles stuff uh, very much further. And as always, the patch is in download for my Patreons. Uh, and it's going to be public for everybody in one week. So yeah, thank you for following. And see you soon. Ciao.